there. Welcome to Let's Talk with Teresa Ann. I am so glad that you are joining me on today's episode. If this is your first time joining me on Let's Talk with Teresa Ann, I want to first of all say welcome. Secondly, go get yourself a cup of coffee or hot tea or even some hot cocoa. Pull up a chair and let's have a great chit chat. What's my show about? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is what it's about. It's really getting to highlight incredible women who have stories that reveal God's faithfulness in the midst of their hardships, tragedies, and victories. So with that said, here is what's coming up next. I had the honor and privilege of interviewing Brie Lastly, who is the founder of Fight Like Girls. She was a victim of an attempted murder from a man who served in prison for 14 years, went into a halfway house and escaped. And four days later happened upon her and her sister's duplex, broke into her home. And the rest of the story will be shared on what's coming up next. Exciting. And for those of you who are just tuning in, I am so honored to have Brie Lastly. And um, as you heard in the introduction, you heard a little bit of her story, but I just kind of want to ask you maybe some questions that people haven't asked you before. So did you have a passion for fighting for for others before the attack? That's a really good question. And I think I did in a different kind of way. Okay. So after I graduated high school, I wasn't really ready to go to college. I I wanted to do something before I had to grow up. (laughs) So I I a lot faster than I probably would have if I stayed home. (laughs) Wow. I went and I taught English as a second language. And it was so awesome to me because I saw that the way that teaching English and people learning English as a second language, I saw the way that it changed their lives for the better. Wow. And I loved it. Mm. And so um, I've kind of, I've been doing that ever since. So I went to China and did that, and then um, Ukraine, Egypt, Brazil. Oh my goodness. Mexico. You really just took what you already knew, Uh and you just taught other people. Yeah. Now, how did you get to communicate with the people of Ukraine or China? Like, how did you get connected in that way? So I went to, I went through different companies going to those, those countries. Okay. And then, um, when I came home, I started studying dental hygiene and it was just to go to school, whatever. And then I still really liked teaching English, and, but I developed kind of my own curriculum of teaching. Okay. I just wanted to teach them the English they needed to know for whatever wow. spot they were in their life, right? Okay. Um, anyway, and then I since created a company called Acro English, and we just go around to different companies teaching their employees specific English lessons really? that they need to know for their job. Yeah, and wow. so I, I saw that, and I saw that not only that it can bring in a better income or right. create a better financial yeah. stability for their family, but I saw the confidence that it brought is like mm. being able to communicate with people where they live or with new people or learn about different cultures, and it was so, mm. it's just been so good for me. Wow. So I guess like fighting for people, that's kind of what I just yeah. fighting for something better. That's and I started with English. I like that. Yeah. Fighting for something better. Don't yeah. you love that? <laughs> so, Brie, that brings me to the story of where Fight Like Girls comes into the picture. Yeah. Can you tell us that part of this story in whichever way you want to share it? Totally. As you know, on September 23rd, 2015, a man who should have been in prison mm-hmm. was out of prison and escaped a halfway house. And when he, and then he came into my bedroom window and he attacked me and my sister. Later on, we found that only 80%, or only 20% of women fight back. And that means 80% of women are raped or murdered in those circumstances. And if it wasn't for my sister, then I would have been part of the 80%. Um, Luckily, she came upstairs and she was fighting physically and screaming and biting and doing whatever you're supposed to do to get an attacker off of you. And that's when I, it clicked for me that, oh, I need to fight. So we're talking to detectives. Goodness. And he told me one day, it was, it was probably the week after our attempted murder, 
He said, Brie, if everyone would fight like you girls, have your endings. Wow. And I just remember, fight like girls. Oh my gosh. I need, and it was, and it was scary for me too because when he came in my bedroom window, I froze. I don't know if you've ever had a bad dream where you can't move or you can't right. move anything. That's exactly what happened to me. And I didn't want that to happen to my friend or my other sisters or something. And so I started sharing my story it's just to like raise awareness that you need to physically fight back. Wow. But then I quickly learned that my physical fight was just the beginning of my of your journey. Of my journey. So with that, you know, we can see per se scars. Yeah. Physically. But yeah. people can't see the scars mentally of totally. what you see. Yeah. Or what goes mm -hmm. through your mind or maybe even a smell. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Takes or right takes you right back. Yeah. Um, how did you overcome that? And I know yeah. you're still overcoming. Totally. Is really yeah. the key yeah. word. Well, and I, I appreciate you even recognizing that because I think a lot of times, I don't know if it's culture, I don't know what it is, but we survived. And so people, mm. and it's wonderful, and, it's, and we did, and I'm so grateful. But it, I tend to just think that we get confused of like, surviving an attempted murder or surviving something terrible or getting mm. through something terrible we think it's over we did it it's done but survival is ongoing i don't think there's a time to come on on survival you know yeah and so people would ask me how are you feeling i was stabbed multiple times in the abdomen each stab wound was at least four inches deep oh my gosh um, it hit anything vital and so yeah he stabbed me multiple times and i went to the doctor i went to the emergency room and i had 16 doctors watching over, looking over me. So, and I remember the one doctor, the main doctor came in, he got these six fingers, put them in the top one of my abdomen, and he said, I think he missed her aorta. And every single other doctor said no. Almost like, what? all at the same time. Like, no way, he got it. There's no way he missed. And he said, no, I think he missed. So I took three CT scans and another ultrasound. And sure enough, he missed. Oh and my! They stitched all of my stab wounds up, and I went home that night. That night? That night. Yeah. You guys, she went yeah. home. I went home that, that night. night. <laughs> yeah. God of yeah. miracles. Yes. So, oh my gosh! So here, you know, I've seen multiple interviews that you've had yeah. with with several people, and you know, I I was like ask her this question you know yeah um the question that i really want to know is because there was there was a part in one of the segments of the show that you were on in which compassion came over you yeah yeah that's that that part of my story i think is the saving part of my story not only for me but for my attacker as well. Mm. It was me and my attacker were in the basement. It's dark, it's scary. Um, he, had, he had already stabbed me. He stood up and said, I'm going to get your little sister. He had his hunting knife um, pointed in his right hand towards me and turned his head over his left shoulder to tell me he was going to get her. And when he went to go up the stairs, I remember getting up and jumping and I grabbed his arms and pulled him down. And so then it was me and him, he's 6'2", 210 pounds, ripped, huge. Oh and I was holding his arms, and I'll never forget, um, his arms were so big, and my hands, I couldn't even put my hands around his arm, like his whole yeah. arm, and I remember the sweat, his sweat would fall down his arm and hit my hand and kind of like bounce off. And I remember just holding him and looking at him and just saying, let me help you. Just talk to me, what do you need? Who are wow. you? Wow. And right then, he put his head down and he said, I'm sorry. <gasps> and for a split second, and I have the goosebumps just talking oh about it as you God. can see. But for a split second, I felt a love stronger than any love I have ever felt. And I knew that it wasn't for me. Yeah. He had just stabbed me. He was trying to kill me. I did not love him. I still don't love him. Yeah. But there was a love I couldn't deny. And I think it was the highest the highest power of love mm. and I believe that it only could come from the highest power yeah and right then I knew that somewhere someone loved mm. me and that I didn't need to worry about it. I didn't need to 
because mm. there's so much anger that follows and I don't get me wrong I still get angry but it was that love for just a second yeah. that I felt for him that I knew that there was something more I knew that there's a bigger picture there's more that is so beautiful and you know she she's referring to this higher power and I would call it you know Almighty God yeah Jesus his love that we saw conveyed on the cross you know, the most violent love that, yes, he even loved your attacker. Yeah. Did his family ever reach out to you? No. So his family has not reached out to us. Okay. Um, when the detect we were told that when the detectives called and let his family know what had happened. Okay. They said, we've been expecting this call. How are the girls? Oh. Um, and wow. I, can, I can relate to that in, in a, on a very smaller scale of a, um, family members with, with drug addiction. I understand wow. that. And I think that that's why I had a compassion for him and didn't really want to fight back because I just figured this is someone's dad, this is someone's brother, he just needs drug money. I offered him my phone, I offered him my computer. Take whatever you want, just get out of my house. And he didn't take anything. And so then I knew, okay, he's not here for drug money. For drug money. Because if he was, then he would have been gone a long time ago yeah. with something. Um, and so I knew that it was it was going to get really bad, and it obviously did. Um, and then down in the basement that night, not only did I feel God's love for him, yeah, but I think it also testifies of God's love for me mm. to let me feel that love. Wow, to let me feel something so divine and so pure that He cares enough about me, just or He cares for him just as much as He cares for me. But there's still justice, and he will be taken care of. Yes. But he let me feel that perfect love that obviously I don't think that my attacker felt. And I don't wow. think he felt it because I think he forgot. And it's kind of the same thing that happened to Peter. Is he got out and he's walking towards the Savior. He already recognized him. But then as soon as he lost his focus, that's when he started to see. Yes, know? absolutely. And I think that happens to us all the time. It's like, yeah. okay, there's God, I'm going, I'm going. And then it's like, oh, he's not there. Or he forgot about me. Or the distractions of this yeah, life. exactly. The, the winds waves, and the, the waves. waves. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But mm. then I love the word immediately. Because when wow. Peter cries for help, says he, Christ immediately stretched forth his head. Wow. And then I, I just love imagining Peter walking back to the boat with Jesus. Ah, oh. and can you just imagine, like, oh my gosh, you just, you just give me that walk with him, yes, you know? Like, yes, yes, yes. But I think we can have that walk with him. That is so good. Oh my, I love that. Yeah. You know what I I love most about your story, yeah. Bree, is the fact that you do not wear what happened to you. Yeah. You wear this power of God and His love and His forgiveness. It doesn't mean that you don't have your moments. Totally. It doesn't mean you don't have your dark moments. Yeah. But you you recognize the darkness and yeah. remember the light. Yeah. And I think that is so key for anyone watching right now. Yeah. You know, w one thing I remember, and I wanted to write it down, because yeah. when I was driving here, mm -hmm. I remember thinking how you are not just fighting against something yeah you're fighting for exactly. the value of human life okay. and you're fighting anything that demeans the value of a human being for sure and i love that yeah. about you because if you go on your website you can see how you don't just fight again you know you're not just um here to take self-defense classes yeah. or teach people how to do that but you're even helping girls fight against um self-worth yeah. And, you know, like low self-esteem, totally. depression, yeah. um, abuse of every kind, yeah. um, even their self-abuse, totally. you know, from oh, cutting yeah. to oh, drug yeah. addiction. Yeah. Um, even, I think, I think in my own story, in my own case, it was like, I just survived this attempted murder, right? It's kind of like we were talking about right. before. It's like, it's not over. Like, I'm still <laughs> surviving. Yes. Like, yes. it's going to be a long time, right? Right. But... I think it's so important, and I love how you say, I love that so much, I can't get over it, oh. but fighting against and fighting for. Yes. Um, I love that so much because I have this thing where it doesn't matter what takes you to your rock bottom. Mm. Whatever took you to your rock bottom, 
is different than what took me to mind. Right. But I think we all unite, and that's what I love about Let's Talk Studio, because mm. I think you find women, and you find these people who have been to a rock bottom. Yes. And somehow, listening to your stories, mm. and I'll never forget listening to your story the first time either, that I can't relate to that on... Right. I can, I can sympathize, but I can't empathize, right. I guess. Yes. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I totally get it. And I think it's because we know that rock bottom. And so, mm. whether it's a number on a scale, mm. um, so good. fear, depression, loss of a loved one, an illness, to me and to everyone, I don't, it doesn't matter what takes you there. Mm. What matters is choosing not to stay there. Oh, that's and good. Then, Going forward, I love that. Not that you're getting, not gonna slip back out. Yeah, like, that's right. But just continuing to move forward. Well, it's like what you said about Peter. Yeah. You know, exactly. we're all gonna have those moments where we feel like, oh, we're gonna walk on water. Exactly. Because our focus is so fixed on yeah. Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah. But then in the moments of, I mean, and the distraction can be totally. small. Yeah. It can be vast of yeah. any kind of from spectrum to spectrum. Yeah. But the key is, is that they're in life distractions take place so that we sink yeah. right yeah. but in that there's an anchor and yeah. his name is Jesus yeah. and I just am so excited that you were are part of the show and just thank you for being my guest yeah of course, um, of course. but before we go yes I want to present you with a little gift I like to do this with, with all of my guests <laughs> Good. Well, that was the whole point. No, but um, thank you. Absolutely. But I wanted to show everyone this yes. one. Oh, you have to. Look so, this club. If you, when you go on to um, Fight Like Girls website, your your logo is the the boxing the glove, glove yeah. right? It's perfect. It's perfect for me. <laughs> So, I but so I much. just want to say thank you again yeah, thank you. for joining me on Let's Talk yes, with Teresa Ann. And for those of you who um, got to listen to this, I know you're probably just in awe. Um, but more than anything, remember that this show is about bold inspiration, revealing God's goodness. Have a great day. Thank you all so much for joining Bree and I on this special episode. For those of you who may be asking what happened to the attacker, he was killed instantly by uh, a Salt Lake City police officer who did come in to save the day. God used that police officer police officer in such a miraculous way of course when we were talking even after the cameras stopped rolling it was incredible to hear the rest of the story but I just want to say thank you again for joining us today on today's episode and please feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already to my channel like and share this video and God bless you guys thank you so much for joining us today